Today I wanna to talk about something that I've been reading a lot about recently, and this is lipoprotein A. So lipoprotein A is kind of in vogue. People are talking about it a lot more than they used to be, and that's because it's an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease and atherosclerosis. It's prothrombotic, means it causes clots, it causes clotting of the blood, it stiffens the arteries and causes plaque buildup, and it's mainly genetic. So 70 to 90% of a person's lipoprotein A concentration comes from their genes, and that gene has actually been isolated in humans to be on chromosome six. One of the reasons that I feel like lipoprotein A doesn't get as much attention is because there aren't as many therapeutic targets for it because it's kind of like the new kid on the block. We've known in medicine for a while now that low density lipoprotein concentration correlates with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, but more recently lipoprotein A has been gaining a lot of traction as a potential risk factor for cardiovascular disease, and and a pretty potent one at that. So how do you know if you have high lipoprotein A? So you wanna ask your doctor to test for it because it's not a part of a standard lipid panel. A standard lipid panel is gonna measure your triglycerides and your total cholesterol and your fractionated cholesterol of LDL, HDL, typically VLDL, and then you can make various calculations based on that. But a standard lipid panel does not check for lipoprotein A. So if you have a family history of cardiovascular disease, this is something that you definitely wanna have your doctor add to your lipid panel. Once you become aware if you do have elevated lipoprotein A, there are a few things that you could do to lower it. And spoiler alert, there aren't many lifestyle changes that you can make. As someone who puts a lot of emphasis on lifestyle change with diet and exercise, this kind of came as a shock to me because my family has a familial predisposition to having high lipoprotein A. I've always thought you exercise, eat a really clean diet, and that should take care of a lot of things. When it comes to this, unfortunately, that's not the case. So let's run through the list of therapeutic options. Typically, when someone has high LDL cholesterol, they're put on a statin. Statins do not work for lowering lipoprotein A, and they could actually even cause a slight increase in lipoprotein A. The next category is these PCSK9 inhibitors like Evolocumab. So basically how these things work is they inhibit a protein called PCSK9 that normally degrades LDL receptors present on the liver. LDL receptors pull LDL out of circulation and metabolize it. If you inhibit the protein that breaks down the LDL receptor, the LDL receptor pulls more LDL out of the blood and metabolizes it. These drugs are new on the block, very expensive, but proven to be very, very, very good at lowering LDL and actually lipoprotein A as well. They show about a 25 to 30% reduction in lipoprotein A, which is pretty awesome and one of the best things that we have now. As a side note, there's a supplement called berberine that I've been reading a lot about in the clinical trials associated with it. One of the mechanisms by which berberine lowers cholesterol is by being a natural PCSK9 inhibitor. It has to be dosed pretty frequently, so I take about 300 milligrams twice a day. And the effect of berberine on lipoprotein A has not been studied, so I would not take it for that indication. However, I do take it to lower my cholesterol and lower my risk for things like diabetes and metabolic syndrome. Another thing that's been studied to lower lipoprotein A is niacin, which had about a 20% reduction in lipoprotein A, but it wasn't clinically significant, meaning that it didn't lead to a decrease overall number of deaths associated with increased lipoprotein A. There are a few drugs in clinical trials right now that are very promising to have awesome indications for lowering lipoprotein A in the future. One of them is called pelicarsin, which can lower lipoprotein A by 80 to 90%. Pelicarsin is an antisense oligonucleotide, which basically prevents the production of lipoprotein A. It's not on the market yet, it's not available yet. Another highly effective treatment for elevated lipoprotein A is lipoprotein apheresis, and this is basically when they take blood from your body, filter out the lipoproteins, and then put the blood back inside of you. This therapy started in the 1980s in Germany and Japan, and can reduce lipoprotein A concentrations by between 60 and 90% after one session. It needs to be done on a regular basis though, because if you don't do it, your body's just gonna keep producing lipoprotein A at the genetic level that you were predetermined to make it, and it's gonna become elevated again. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you wanna see more of in regards to lipids, lipid management, metabolic syndrome, and decreasing your risk for cardiovascular disease using currently recommended therapies, and new things that are on the horizon that we could do to lower our risk of dying from something that's actually very preventable. So thank you guys for tuning in. Hope to see you soon. Take care.